What's going on YouTube? It's Cheek Text Films, your tour guide on the road to elevating your image. And on this channel, I like to highlight my ups and downs so you can capitalize off of my wins and suffer none of my losses. If that's something you're interested in, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so you don't miss any more videos. All right, man, today we're gonna talk about the Black Magic Pocket Cinema 6K Pro. Been going back and forth about this camera for about man two weeks now ever since I got all of the, the the stuff that I need for the rig seeing how big this camera actually is fully kitted out man I kind of want to go back to GS5 I mean GH5 GH5S days man smaller camera you know but still a workhorse. What's going on? Let me cut in here and apologize for the audio. Uh, it's another known issue with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera is when you plug in a microphone, you still have to press the button and uh, allocate external microphone or whatever microphone you're using. Uh, another thing that you gotta think about while you're shooting along with the battery and memory and all of that. So I apologize. I forgot, man. I forgot to, to click on external audio, man. And also, the AC going, the fan going. We're going to fix those on, on uh, further videos. But again, I apologize for the audio in this video. Um, pulling up to an a event or a, a commercial shoot or anything like that, it looks good to have the Black Magic Pocket Cinema 6K Pro. But man <laughs> all of the stuff that goes into this camera is overwhelming sometimes man i'm not gonna lie to you uh, had to build a bigger rig for the ronin just to uh accommodate the black magic pocket cinema 6k pro now i got it because it's like an update to the 6k with a swivel screen and some nds man that's what i thought you know what i mean i could run a gun with it and um, if I don't get rid of it, that's probably how I'm gonna end up using it. But I think the, the bigger thing that's going on with the weight is the lens. The Sigma 24 to 35 is humongous, man. So, you know, I'm, I'm used to micro four thirds. I'm used to, uh, I'm used to little bitty lenses, little bitty cameras, man, and, and still getting the job done. Uh, a lot of the times this 6K Pro gets in my way, man. I ain't gonna lie to you, I don't get certain shots because it's too heavy to put in that position or I'm too lazy to do it because I'm tired from holding this camera all day. Uh, but ultimately the image quality is unmatched though, you know, so that's the only reason why I wanna hang on to this camera, but I'm this close to selling it. And But I, I went through every brand out there. I don't like the way Sony stuff look. Don't like the way the Nikon stuff look. Don't like the way the Canon stuff look. They dealing with overheat and, and all of that nonsense. The only camera that I, I miss and I love is the GH5S, man. So uh, I was thinking about going ahead and getting one of those and just kitting out my uh, my my kit with lenses, man. Just, just really, you know, leaning on glass. Now, I ain't gonna get that depth of field that I'm used to with the EF uh, mount and uh, the Super 35 sensor and the Black Magic Pocket Cinema 6K Pro, but I feel like I can still get it with you know lens compression on the GH5S. I, I just got oh one second. I just got the Panasonic G7 and I got a 20 millimeter pancake lens and an 85 millimeter uh, lens. You see how small it is, man. So, um, yeah, this is what I'm used to, man. Stuff that's around this size. The Black Magic camera is humongous, man. So, but that's what I'm filming on right now. The image quality is amazing, but. 
Uh, with the 85, I feel like the GH5S can still deliver me good quality images because with V-Log, um, it's almost like raw to me, man, as far as color grading. You can push that real far just like I can with the raw. Um, but like I said, the, the biggest thing that, that keeps me from from getting rid of this camera is the dynamic range. You can really tell the difference when you're comparing footage. And between this camera and even the Ursa, when I had the Ursa working, uh, I shot like two or three videos and I was going back through those videos and just looking at the quality comparison. The dynamic range makes all of the difference, man. All of the, the 6K, 8K, all of that is cool, but the dynamic range to me is what makes a video look professional and how far you can push it in post and all of that. I'm a, I like color grading, so uh, Black Magic is, you know, is amazing to me. But like I said, I came from the GH5S where I was doing the same thing, man. And I even looked at some footage from the GH5S and man, that Vlog L is amazing. So. I don't know, man. That's the camera I was thinking about. Or, or should I wait for the the Panasonic GH6, or should I get the Panasonic GH5 Mark II, or the the Panasonic S1? Uh, these are the cameras that I'm juggling with. Which one should I get, or should I just stay with the 6K Pro and deal with the weight? Uh, my problem is I travel a lot, man. Putting this big old camera in the bag leaves no room for my three days worth of clothes when I go somewhere. So uh, that's the biggest issue is taking all of this stuff with me when I'm going out of town and, and shooting at these tattoo conventions or commercials or music videos in other cities and states, man. So I know with a smaller mirrorless camera, I can just, you know, get a regular camera bag whip the camera out, put the lens on, and go to work, you know. But with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, you gotta have batteries, so I had to have the big battery grip at the bottom. You gotta have, I mean, the EF mount lenses are humongous, so you gotta tote those big lenses. Um, gotta tote the monitor if I'm trying to film myself because it's not a swivel screen, I can't whip it out and see it in the app. You can't see it on the app like you can with the Panasonic app. So you can't see the actual image, which is crazy to me. Like, show me the image, dog. Can't see the image. And then on top of that, man, I'm trying to get into editing everything on my eye, on my iPad. So we're gonna get into that, a series of that too, but look forward to that, man. That's coming, man. Editing everything on the iPad, man. So and the iPad can't read these B-RAW files at all. Like you can't even open them. So with, um, with LumaFusion adding, being able to, to edit from SSD, that's gonna be a big game changer, man, for me. You know, that was one of the things holding me up. They already added video transparency to it. So for me, man, I like, like the last video on the channel with where I showed you my rig, I can edit that sitting here, man. I had to put it on the iPad and you know, as I'm going through the iPad, I'm going on the website for the Amazon links and all of that kind of stuff. Getting all the lower thirds and graphics and all of that kind of stuff, it, it was simple with the iPad. With a computer for some reason is just overly, <laughs> overly, uh, what's the word? It's overly complicated for no reason, man. So uh, I wanna get to editing and video editing and photo editing all on the iPad and I want to be able to teach you guys that because these uh, these video apps is out of control man Adobe is out of control $60 a month to use the program I think Fusion is like 30 or 40 bucks in the app store one time purchase man you use it forever so uh, yeah that's be looking for, for classes on that but I'm just telling you where I'm going with why I might get rid of the, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K Pro. It's an amazing camera, amazing image, but as big as an elephant, man. It's humongous, so um, I don't know. Now my workaround to getting my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 6K
Pro footage into the iPad is to run it through um, DaVinci, color everything, put all of the video clips on one clip, and um, and send those to the iPad and chop it up from there. So that's my workaround at the moment. But uh, when I shoot with the Panasonic G7, I can just take those clips straight in there. Now color grading on Luma Fusion is still kind of iffy, but with the new 3.0 update, maybe they'll change that, man. I'm, I'm excited, I'm looking forward to the 3.0 update in Luma Fusion. I'm excited and looking forward to where my career is gonna take me. I got some big moves coming, y'all stay tuned. But uh, I don't know if this Black Magic Pocket Cinema 6K gonna be around for the big moves, man. I don't know. <laughs> We gonna figure it out, man. But anyway, man, it was just a little gear talk with y'all today, man. If you like videos like this, subscribe to the channel. Other than that, I'm out. But y'all, y'all keep them cameras rolling, man.